The year is 1991. Garth Brooks is roping the wind. The term going postal is coined. And cool as ice is freezing the box office. But this is no time to talk about the filmography of Vanilla Ice, because today we're counting down the worst games of 1991, based solely on the reviews found in Nintendo Power. When Chase HQ first hit arcades, critics heralded the Taito release as more than just another racing game. Setting itself apart from OutRun and Rad Racer, Chase HQ had players racing down a single opponent, doing your best to stop them from escaping. Unfortunately, this killer concept didn't translate well to 8-bit consoles. Nintendo Power found both the portable and home console versions to be lacking, though the Nintendo Entertainment System rated worse. They enjoyed the play control, but had the opposite view of the challenge and presentation. The scaling effects were rough, even when compared to other NES racers. The series fared better on the Sega Master System, Game Gear, and TurboGrafx-16. With Robotron 2084 exclusive to Atari Lynx, Crystal Quest was about the closest Game Boy owners got to a dual-stick shooter in 1991. While it sounds like a fantasy-based role-playing game, this Game Boy Oddity offers fast action in a science fiction setting. This wasn't enough to impress Nintendo Power. The editors seemed intrigued by the play control, but were left cold by the graphics, sound, challenge, and theme. GamePro strongly disagreed. Even though they noted the ho-hum graphics, sound, and challenge, critic Earth Angel ended up giving the game a perfect 5 out of 5 in fun factor. She called it fun and addictive, two words missing from Nintendo Power's review. From the adventures of Lolo, to Kirby, to Smash Brothers, HAL has been a part of some of the most memorable games of all time. They also published HAL Wrestling, a poorly received sports simulator released on Game Boy. Developed by Human Entertainment, HAL Wrestling is a slow-paced fighting game with plain graphics and chunky controls. Nintendo Power hated the way the game played, and also called out the unbalanced difficulty. Not even the ability to link Game Boys together helped keep HAL Wrestling from finding a spot on Nintendo Power's worst list. In 1988, Jellico was able to win over critics and fans with a halfway decent port of Bases Loaded. Two years later, they followed up the success with an even better sequel, Bases Loaded 2 Second Season. However, by 1991, critics were tired of the series' cliches. Bases Loaded 3 scored significantly lower than its predecessors, with Nintendo Power giving the edge to newcomer Roger Clemens' MVP Baseball. Electronic Gaming Monthly concurred, giving Bases Loaded 3 low marks across the board. Sushi X gave it a 3 out of 10, complaining that it felt rushed and only offered minor improvements. Apparently it was a fluke, as Jalico was able to right the ship with Bases Loaded 4, as well as a series of well-received Super NES installments. After developing one of the most influential games of all time, Alexei Pajitnov settled into a life of trying to reinvent the puzzle genre. While most of his ideas would eventually find a way out of Russia, it was Hattress that hit North American chores first. This puzzle spin-off is every bit as bad as Tetris is good, and Nintendo Power agreed. Reviewing the Nintendo Entertainment System version, the magazine gave Hattress a 2 out of 5. To put it in perspective, that's tied with two other releases as the lowest-scoring NES game. In fact, Hattress held the record as Nintendo Power's lowest-scoring game well into the 64-bit era. For what it's worth, the Game Boy port scored a more impressive 2.8, keeping it out of contention of the Worst Game of the Year prize. Perhaps you're better off skipping Hattress altogether. Hey, thanks for watching our video. This is the sixth Nintendo Power countdown we've posted and there's no sign of it stopping anytime soon. We'll be back next Tuesday with Nintendo Power's Top 10 Games of 1992, which is when things get really interesting. In case you missed it, I recently posted my review of Poncho on PlayStation 4 and Steam, so definitely check that out. We have a bunch more reviews on the way, as well as a big announcement regarding our big holiday series. I recommend you click the subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then.